when Layla stood by you and, uh, you know, she said you sleep under a bridge, I, I have a similar relationship because my wife, you know, I, I've joked, we kind of have like a Southpaw story. When she met me, I'm a penny stock. I'm just starting the company. She's successful. She knows what she's doing. Then we kind of grown the business together. And I've asked her a few times, like, Hey, well, you know, what, what did you, what did you see in me then? But I'm curious, what, what do you think? Uh, why do you think she stuck by you? I think Layla is an exceptional judge of people. I think if there's like one skill that Layla is world-class at is that she just, she just sees through people. Layla has never been wrong about a hire, about a partnership, ever. Um, it's pretty impressive. And so I think she saw, or she's, I'm giving, I'm giving her words here, but I mean, she saw potential in me and she felt like if I had, if I was able to shed some of these bad partnerships and beliefs and relationships and things like that, that were weighing me down, that there was something underneath that was good. You know, a lot of ways that was kind of how both of us, I think, saw our relationship at the time was like, we're not good yet, but I think that we could be good together. And I mean, our relationship in the first two, three years was not, was not like a, a Hollywood movie. You know what I mean? Like we were mostly business partners and we got married 11 months in, but like we didn't have a wedding. We didn't have a marriage. I mean, we had a marriage, um, but like we didn't have a party. We didn't have a honeymoon. We worked the day of our, of our eloping and then we worked the next day. You know what I mean? It just, nothing happened and we just worked straight through. But I think it was about three years in where we started to like really recognize one another and really find our groove kind of even romantically. So we have definitely like an atypical story uh, from that perspective, but it has worked out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I heard you mention on uh, on a podcast, the importance of respect within a relationship, sometimes respect being even more important than affection. I mean, it's good to have both, but just to be able to respect one another. Yeah. I think there's, if you look at, um, gosh, I, I wish I could quote this better, but there's like the four horsemen of divorce. Uh, they did, you know, sure for this like Hallmark study, they like, they have couples bring up some subject that they argue about and they study how they argued and they could predict with like a 91% success rate who was going to be divorced in 10 years. And there's four horsemen of like divorce. And the one that was the highest predictor was contempt, which can seen, be seen visually with an eye roll, which is both a lack of respect um, for the other person and also thinking you're better than them. And so that like combination is deadly for relationships. And I think that if you were to reverse that and think that like the other person is better than you are and have ultimate respect for them, then you might have something that could safeguard a marriage or a relationship. You know, I know the, the two of you have worked together. I, I joke, my wife and I, I say like, you know, we've been together, but it's, it's like dog years, right? Because, you know, we, you know, we wake up together, we go to the office and then we come home. So it's just like multiplied by seven. But like, what, what advice do you have for other couples, whether they're considering working together, if they're already working together, how to, how to, you know, how to keep that going? I have to put my disclaimer that like, we've only been together seven years and I think in, in decades. So, you know, when I, when we cross our first decade, I'll let everyone know, but you know, the only encouraging thing I can say is that from a time spent together, the average marriage, uh, people spend two hours a day together, uh, and 45 minutes of that is high quality. And the other hour and 15 minutes is watching television, uh, or eating and doing like household activities. And so the amount of time we've spent together compared to the average relationship is we've had like a 45 or 50 year marriage, uh, comparatively in terms of hours spent. That being said, uh, with that large caveat, I think that the biggest thing that has worked for us is just acceptance, which is that Layla has never tried to change me and I've never really tried to change her. And I think I get a lot of messages, which is like, how do I find my Layla? Or more specifically, how do I make my wife into Layla? Which is a weird message to get because it means that you don't accept your partner for who they are. And so people are like, how do I get my wife into business? I was like, if she's not already into business, she's not into business. Like, you're not going to make her into business. It should be like a woman saying like, how can I make my man taller? It's just not going to happen. So I think, um, and this is going to probably be relatively controversial, but I think a lot of people lose in the draft. So a lot of people think about like, how do you, how do you coach a championship team? I think a lot of teams lose in the draft. They don't have the talent. And so again, that's probably a little bit contrarian to like all marriages are savable, which maybe they are. The question is, are they ideal or are they optimal for both partners in terms of achieving their, their potential? And I think a lot of them are. Because I think a lot of people mature over time and probably wouldn't make the same decisions as they did, you know, 20 years ago, which is one of the hardest parts about a lifelong decision in general. And so I think that making sure that you're picking somebody who has the same long-term goal as you, has the same values as you. And I think the, the single greatest one is that they, that if you want to grow, that they want to grow. Because growth is also another word for change, which means that if you have two people who are changing for a long period of time, you just better hope they'd be changing in the same direction. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you know, obviously like choice of spouse or life partner or whatever, you know, it's obviously probably one of the most important decisions we make in our lives. It's number one. So, okay. So on that note, then what would you say is like two and three? Well, I, I say that from uh, measuring from subjective well-being. So it has a 0.7 more correlation to your subjective well-being as the strength of your relationship with your significant other. 
So there's nothing else that comes close to that. So I would say from that perspective, it is a, it is the, the most important one. And pretty much, if you think about this, everything else is impermanent. The business you start is impermanent. You can change businesses. You can change, you can change markets. You can change where you live, you can change who you work with. Like all of these things are changeable. But if you are married and you believe in trying to stay with that commitment, then like you're making a permanent either detractor or addition to your life. And that person's going to interact with you probably more than anyone else. And not probably. You will be interacting with that person probably more than anyone else, especially if you work together. And so, like, pick wisely.